Well, for more, we're now joined by Alberta columnist Graham Thompson. Graham, thank you for joining us on such a busy night. It's my pleasure. Now, you know, we, we look at these numbers and, and the last group of polls uh, going into tonight, they still give the UCP the advantage. But for, for the most of the numbers, they are within the, this margin of error. Are you surprised at how close this race has been and really right up to the end? Well, no, and a surprise in the sense that uh, we saw this coming before the election. The NDP actually was ahead in many polls uh, over the last year or so. But we could see it narrowing, but we did see a really close battle coming up. And it's remained that way throughout the election. I think it's, it's difficult to say, you know, um, what's going to happen because of many factors what's happening right now. But we've known for some time the battle will likely be in Calgary that Edmonton will likely go to the NDP, all 20 seats, there's 41 seats outside the big cities. They'll mostly go to the UCP. That so comes down to 26 seats in Calgary. And the thing is, even some of those uh, ridings themselves are a toss-up. So it's been really close, a closely fought uh, battle. And the fact that it's still close, to me, is not surprising. To me, it's interesting and new. This is, this is number 11 in terms of provincial elections I've covered. And I've never seen anything this close, because normally in Alberta, you know who's going to win before the ballots are even counted. And the thing is, today, still a big question mark. Now, is that because of the leader here? Because we've been watching the NDP these past four weeks. They really want to make this essentially a referendum on Danielle Smith. How much of this close race is because of Smith? That's a really good question. I think this is a close race because of Smith. She is so controversial. She has said and done so many controversial things, not just, you know, months or years ago, but you know, days ago in the sense of, um, you know, just being found uh, to have breached Conflicts of Interest Act because of that telephone call she made to the Attorney General to try and help out someone facing criminal charges involving the Coots border blockade. So controversies have followed her. She creates her own controversies. So I think if the UCP had got another leader like uh, Travis Tapes, the finance minister who finished second last year in the leadership race, I think the UCP would be headed to a comfortable 50-55 seat majority. As it stands now, arguably, the reason it's such a tight race is because of Smith. When it comes to issues of trust and leadership, polls have shown that Albertans tend to trust Rachel Notley, the NDP leader, over Danielle Smith. So even though Smith has tried to change the narrative, and maybe we'll see if she's actually succeeded, because she's putting forward a much more moderate, uh, reasonable face, much different than the face that she put forward last year during that very divisive, angry UCP leadership race. And we'll see if that actually is paying dividends for her. And because look, she knew she couldn't campaign on the anger and divisiveness, and she's spending as well as being moderate $68 billion, a record amount of spending thanks to oil prices, money flowing into the treasury. And so this is something she's doing as well. Because look, Albertans love a government that can give them low taxes, high spending, and a balanced budget. And Smith is giving them that because of the price of oil. Well, and, and not only that, that's, that is her campaign platform, right? Because if, if the NDP is trying to make this uh, about Danielle Smith's leadership, the, the, the UCP is trying to make this about the, the, the economic credentials of, of Rachel Notley and telling essentially Albertans you can't trust it. What is it about the NDP, though? Because, the, you know, if you go to the polls, most of them show that the Albertans do prefer, prefer Rachel Notley as a leader, but they cannot get behind the NDP. What's that all about? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the NDP is attacking Smith, whereas the UCP is attacking the NDP. You know, because I think they know people like Rachel Notley. The thing is, the NDP. A couple of things about the NDP. Of course, you know, they would say it's a socialist uh, party, and that the NDP were in power from 2015 to 2019. They brought in a carbon tax and destroyed the economy. The reason we had a recession uh, while the NDP was in power was because of the price of oil. It dropped, just as it's helping the UCP now because the prices uh, got all kinds of money flowing in. So you have this record, it's ironic, when it comes to having a record as premier, Rachel Notley has one and Daniel Smith doesn't. Smith was uh, made premier during that UCP leadership race last October, in power really for seven months, doesn't have really much of a record as premier, whereas Notley has a record during a recession. So this is a problem. For the NDP, you've got the UCP saying, look, they're a socialist um, a government. They would destroy our economy. 
Look what happened last time. So that's what's happening here. But the thing is, we're going to wonder, will it be that kind of knee-jerk reaction from Albertans? And one reason why it's still such a close race is because it seems that Albertans are rejecting that sort of black and white analogy from the UCP. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I got I got a couple of minutes here and I do want to ask one question, though, because, you know, if Rachel Notley and the NDP win, obviously we know her job is secure. But if Danielle Smith wins, is her job secure, given the number of questions being asked about her leadership, even within the UCP ranks? Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because you're right. You need 44 seats for a majority, a simple majority in this um legislature. So if the NDP gets 44, 45 seats, they'll be dancing in the streets. They'll be really, really happy. And you're right, Notley will be secure. Whereas if Daniel Smith gets 44, 45 seats, is a real problem. Because last election, the UCP got 63 seats. Now, they, they could lose 19 seats and still win a uh, majority, a very, 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 very small majority. But if, if Smith, you know, if she loses, she's out. If she gets 44, 45 seats, uh, there'll be real trouble a day, a days ahead for her because the party will be thinking, hey, wait a minute, you took us down like 19, 20, 21 seats. That is not good. Now, this could bring a civil war into the UCP because if the NDP wins, or even if the UCP wins by a tiny uh, majority, it means that UCP is going to be sort of more of a rural-based party, having lost so many seats in Calgary and all of them in Edmonton. That's going to cause a problem for the UCP. Yes. So if Smith doesn't win a comfortable majority, that means real trouble for her in the days ahead. And we've seen in the past how the conservatives in this, this province are eager to kick out premiers who are failing. And I think this could be a problem for Smith. We've already heard from uh, insiders, candidates on, uh, I've talked to, who think that if Smith just gets a small majority, the knives will be out for her over the summer. Graham Thompson, thank you for the time. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Graham Thompson.